Hello, welcome. We're going to be looking at in this video is we're going to be looking at interpretation and interpretation strategies. Now, what we're going to be looking at is basically four methods that you will be able to use in order to interpret any text that you're given, whether it is a text that you have read in class, whether it is a text you've read in the exam, or any other kind of text that you're asked to uh, read, a, read, watch, or comment upon. These are strategies that are not just apl applicable to anything that's written. It can be used for visuals. It can be used for any kind of text that you may be given. So we're going to look at it, and we're going to look at the uh, sorts of uh, devices which are used and just how you go about interpreting them. Okay, so to start with, basically interpretation strategies are ways of thinking about and analyzing a text. They allow you to understand complex text. All right, now interpretation is at the heart of what makes the text complicated. So if you get a text and go, I don't understand this, well, it's because you have to interpret it. Okay, so it's up to you and it's up to what you um, do when you're studying a text to be able to interpret it. Now, a lot of texts out there are quite complicated and they're not, not going to spell out for you what exactly they're hinting at because no text will do that. So what you've got to do is you've got to uh, think very carefully about, okay, what is it this text is trying to say? What do I overall, what's the overall impression I get from it? And then how can I apply uh, what I know into understanding what it means? Okay, so there is that part. It basically will also allow you to read a text on multiple levels, and this is the reason why you want to be using interpretation strategies. Now, the four ways of looking at it, you don't need to know these technical names, but what you do need to know is the process. As is, or as in, the process for basically um, interpreting a text, to be able to do it yourself, to be able to um, use your own words and your own way of thinking. All those things are very important for you as an English student and are much more important for you continuing on as an English student, whether you go to university or otherwise. Okay, so, so let's look at methods of interpretation. Now, the main one you'll look at is, I guess, literal, which is the exact meaning of the words that you will see in a text. Okay, so as it's written. So if it's talking about um, how, or basically how something's described in the text is what you'll be looking at for um, a literal interpretation of it. Okay, so there's nothing metaphorical about it. There's nothing um, that's symbolic about it. All it is is pretty much as it is written. Now, I will make a very clear distinction here, which is the difference between a literal interpretation of a text and comprehension. Okay. Now, comprehension is you saying where something is in the text, as in where does it say this. Literal interpretation requires you to answer what does it say and why does it say it. Okay, so it is more than just simply saying, oh, there's this in there, and then leaving it that and saying, well, I've answered it. You do have to say what it is and why it's important. So there is a very crucial aspect of that. Lateral basically is still you looking for a literal path, but looking at probably the least obvious ones. So um, giving you all the possible answers is what you're looking at. Okay, so when you're thinking laterally, you're thinking not only outside the box, but you're thinking of all the possible answers. So not only are you considering the most obvious one, you're considering other alternatives, which may, ne which may actually be true and may actually have a better um, answer than what your obvious, your literal response is. Okay, so you can look at it in terms of that sense and you can look at it in terms of something having multiple meanings, which is also something that lateral thinking allows you to um, be able to, to utilize is multiple answers for the same question. Okay. Symbolic, now this is the tough one, which is basically the metaphorical or symbolic meaning of something, as in what's written is meaning something else. It's the complete opposite to literal. So it's not as it literally is, it's something completely different. It means something else. And finally, stylistic, as in the form, features, and stylings. Basically what you look at when you look at language techniques. But it's more about making a judgment, not only about what language techniques are in there, but what sort of effect it creates. Because language techniques are there not just to um, have different uh, fancy devices which you can use or even things that you can interpret within the text. It's used to, to help to create an effect and to um, essentially not only create a picture in your mind but be cr create a, a sort of sensation or whatever it is. 
that it's trying to do. So stylistic features, and as I said, these can apply to not only um, writing, but for film as well. So if you look at things like camera techniques, for instance, in film, if you look at um, the way that the stage is positioned and the use of stage, if you're looking at a play, um, all those things all come under stylistic features. So those are the four main methods of interpretation. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't need to remember these names. You just need to uh, get into habit of thinking in these particular ways, okay? And if you don't already, it's a very good idea to um, look at the one that you don't really consider yourself very good at and try and improve on it the best you can because these are very important skills and you, you really won't get too far interpreting text without having all of these things at your disposal. Okay, let's start with the literal. Now, the literal interpretation basically requires you to do nothing more than understand what a text is literally saying. So, understanding what the meaning of, of the words which are used are, understanding what it's saying, okay? It requires an explanation, and as I mentioned before, this isn't comprehension. This is you interpreting a text and actually stating what's there and what effect it creates. You need to explain what its purpose is. All right, so if it's describing something for you, now, that, or if it's, if it's showing you something, it's showing you that for a reason. Everything is deliberately done when you're writing or when you're watching a film or whether you're watching a play. Every scene, every uh, in, bit of information that you get on, on screen or in a book is going to be there deliberately. So you need to see or to work out what its purpose is. And that's the difference between this and comprehension. And finally, it requires you to discuss why the literal um, representation is significant. So not only why it's there, but why it's important. All right. Now, there, everything, as I mentioned, has its own purpose, its own reason for being there. You've got to find the most significant ones and discuss why they're significant. Okay, so it's not just about finding things. It's about finding significant things and being able to discuss them, being able to really go into them. And you don't really need to interpret the text at, at, um, any deeper than that. You can simply just talk about what it uses um, as it literally is stated and as it literally is. Okay, let's move on. The lateral. Now, a lateral interpretation is still logical. We're not going down any different paths here. But it considers more than just the obvious option. So if you look at this image, you immediately go, well, that's an apple. Yes, it is. But it can also be other things, and it can be other things that you can state quite logically as what it actually is and what it really does. First of all, it's a source of fiber if you're someone who's a nutritionist. All right. It's a product. It's something that can be bought and sold, as in you go to a shop and you buy one. or you, Well, you probably wouldn't sell one, but you would definitely buy one. So there's those two things. Now, it's logically, it's literally those things, but it's just another way of looking at it. It's a snack, okay? So it's not just um, an object. It's something to be eaten. It's a livelihood, particularly for farmers and orchard growers, ones who actually grow the things. Prote projectile weapon, if you're one of those unscrupulous individuals who like to throw them at certain innocent parties, I'm not going to judge you if you do, but it's another way of looking at it. And all of these things are logical interpretations of it. It doesn't require anything symbolic or metaphorical. It is just simply other ways of looking at it. And so when this... Um, an apple is depicted, it can mean a number of different things. And it doesn't have to be uh, just the difference between what it literally is and what the symbolic interpretation of it is. There is an in-between, and this is where lateral comes in, as in filling in all of the different um, routes other than the obvious ones. Now, it may come up to you immediately and say, well, yeah, these are all fairly obvious, and um, if I talk about in terms of, yes, an apple is a snack, then yes, it's obviously a snack because it's something that you have at lunchtime or just before lunchtime. But even still, they're not the most direct. So you need to look at some um, angles which are somewhat direct, and then you can consider some of the, even the crazier ones as well. Now, obviously, you won't always use the crazier ones. You won't always use the far left or the far right ones because it really depends on the context. Now, the context of the text is very important for this bit because when you do this, it needs to also fit in with the context. So if it's a guide about healthy eating, then projectile weapon is not going to be a consideration here. All right, It's going to be something like the source of fiber or maybe the snack angle. 
All right, then that's, that's what it's going to refer to. So you need to look at it in context. Okay, the symbolic. So it's about finding abstract or metaphorical meanings within a piece of text. And we're going to stick with our Apple example for the meantime, just to just go through the kinds of examples you can have. So you're arguing how an author has chosen to represent ideas indirectly for imagery. Okay, so what the apple actually stands for can be more than, well, literally just the apple in terms of depending on what you believe as well. So in certain groups, obviously, yes, you can look at um, apple as in the corporate giant, but you can also look at apple in terms of other things that it represents through culture, through mythology, through other sorts of things. Yes, it can represent something like um, uh, good health, and this is where the context and theme come in. So when I mentioned before that it, one of the angles you could look at for it is good health, then that's the context and the theme of it, as in the, the text is about um, good health and, and those sorts of things. So when you're looking at the apple in this, in this regard, then you'll be looking at it in terms of its context and its theme. Of course, if, as I said before, it can also take another angle. If you're looking down the road of mythology or um, even religion, uh, it again can have different meanings depending on how you, um, how you interpret it and what the text is also interpreting as well because the text may not be talking about a religious or mythological angle at all. So if it's not going to do that, then you're not going to mention it because it's not really important and it's not going to add anything to your discussion of it. Okay, finally we've got stylistic um, features and this basically looks at how the message is constructed. So this is essentially what language techniques and visual techniques do is they construct message through essentially assembling all those little pieces together. So first of all, you have your visual and language features or your language techniques. Okay, those things which pretty much stand out straight away and the ones that you'd be probably familiar with studying because you would have had them hammered into you for a very long time now. Irony and paradox. So it may be used in an ironic or paradoxical sense. It may, um, you may even think about its representation, how it's shown, if it's a cartoon form, if it's a, a literal form, if it's a symbolic or and, and it's one of those things that can overlap as well. Uh, relationship with theme and audience. So you can discuss that. And certainly it's a stylistic feature if it has a very strong relationship with theme and audience. Um, context and postmodernism, if it's been used in a different sort of way, if it's been used um, depending on how it's been used in context, whether it's been reused. And finally, significance. And this is probably the more important one, is how it's used as a, a significant device. So... It is part of its style as well. And that's basically um, how you would look at it stylistically, is what it, what it contributes to the overall text in terms of its style, in terms of its description, in terms of its um, visuals, in terms of its sensory um, value, all of those things. So in summary, interpretation is something that you can do in a number of different ways. And I want you to consider all those four aspects. It means exploring various options. So don't just go for the most obvious ones. Look around, look outside. Think of that different options. And finally, read into construction of meaning as well. As in, what is this text doing and what is it trying to um, pursue? What is it trying to um, make us think? And certainly you look at connecting it to the theme in order to do that. But otherwise, that's it for the um, strategies of interpretation. So until next time, I'll see you later.